This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Believe it or not, I'm not reviewing this because it was requested. I always saw Elmo as the embodiment of pure innocence. With his wide-eyed look and curious demeanor, I always felt if we looked at the world the same way he did, perhaps we'd all be slightly better people. Of course I'm doing it because it was requested. Sorry to disappoint some fans, but I was never that big into Elmo. On the one hand, that's not really surprising. He appeared well past when I stopped watching Sesame Street. But there's other kids' media past my time that I have no problem with, even if I like to poke fun of them just to see people go nuts. <laughs> I'm so dangerous! <laughs> I think Elmo got on my nerves the same reason Barney or Teletubbies got on my nerves. Overexposure. Elmo was everywhere. You couldn't go into a store without seeing balloons wanting to give you the happiest impalement. Christ! He was the most sought after toy in 1996, with fights breaking out and some selling for over a thousand dollars. All for this nightmare fuel that looks like he's having a seizure and pleasing himself at the same time. I'll say it again, Christ! Had he just stayed on children's television and wasn't all over the place, I probably wouldn't mind him so much. But because his dead eyes, squeaky chalkboard voice, and demon red face stared at me wherever I went, he did get under my skin a bit. Well, in 1999, at the height of his popularity-ish, they made The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. But critical feedback was fair, the craze didn't exactly last very long as it made less than half its budget back. It's almost like a lot changes between what kids like at 3 and what they like at 6. And yes, I know it's odd to review something meant for little, little kids, but I guess it would be good to figure out why Elmo was such a sensation, and I don't know, my inner child still has a soft spot for Sesame Street, so maybe I am a little curious to check it out. Is it worth the overwhelming, eh, it's gotten over the years? There's only one way to find out, this is a grown man reviewing Elmo in Grouchland. The film opens with Bird and Ernie. And no, I won't be making any gay jokes. I feel I've grown far beyond that. Welcome to the movie. Hey, we're so glad you came. Uh! Ernie, hmm? listen, I'm going to take a shower. Have you seen my antibacterial soap? Not quite as bad, but still. Uh! Who are you talking to? The audience, Bert. They're right there. Both of them look very excited to be here. Hey, nice cardigan. Now that, I believe. Whoever saw this movie definitely wore a cardigan. Hey, Bert. Don't you think you ought to put some clothes on now? You mean you won't be sculpting me again today? Sorry, my wrist hurt. The film officially starts as we see our die-hard Tiger Woods fan. Now we know. Waking up and addressing the audience. Emma wants to show you something. It's Elmo's favorite thing in the whole world. People willing to kill each other to get a vibrator version of me. That's power you can't buy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's his blanket, which appears to be missing. Have you seen Elmo's blanket? Yeah! yeah. <sighs> At least they fill in the awkward silence that shows like Dora the Explorer will leave quiet. How can you not shout inappropriate things when they ask you to participate? Can you say rapido? Bone yourself, I'm not Google Translate! Say rapido! You're not even listening to me, I hope your bag eats you! Rapido! You passed the same tree five times! Oh, there you are! He finds his blanket and naturally sings a song about it. Problematic. I do have to give credit how clever the puppet work is on the blanket. I mean, it's Jim Henson and Sesame Street, so of course the puppetry is going to be good, but it's a decent illusion how they make that thing look flat, yet lively. And it does make more sense to bring his blanket to life than save Big Bird's socks. <laughs> 
Those couldn't fit on his feet, so what on earth does he do with them? Mm. Good call. <laughs> Fun fact, that's literally what the tunnel to hell looks like. Elmo washes his blanket. Oh, we got through the first major conflict of the movie. And he comes across Zoe, who's depressed. I really, really wanted to go to the zoo today, but my daddy had to work so he couldn't take me. <sighs> Immediately hooked! Elmo says he can bring the zoo to Zoe and pretends to be different animals. What are you, a lion? Yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, 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 oh. oh that's a monkey! Oh, I know, I know! Your puppeteer did too much blow last night? No, Elmo has something in his nose. Same thing. Zoe really likes his blanket, but Elmo can't seem to part with it even for a few seconds. Elmo wants his blanket back now. Well, in a minute, Elmo. No, not in a minute, Zoe. No, no. Don't make Elmo cut you! Don't make Elmo cut you! <laughs> well, that's a new vocabulary the kids can learn. He says he doesn't want to be your friend anymore, but his blanket is put in even more peril. A familiar waiter decides to help. This looks like a job for Super Grover! One day we'll learn his secret identity. But what about breakfast? No, thank you, sir. I cannot fly any full stomach. This is why there's an Alex Ross painting of you never change. Speaking of characters, I hope never change. Nah, we're too late for that one. Oscar the Grouch gets the blanket and tosses it into the garbage. Oscar, bring out his blanket back! Elmo jumps into Oscar's can, though that does sound more like Bert and Ernie's domain. I swear that's the last- I'm not making that promise. And Elmo discovers Oscar's place is much bigger on the inside. Oh, and there's a portal to a parallel dimension. You know, Sesame Street! <laughs> you must at least be this high in order to watch further. Ernie, Ernie! Oh, what's the matter, Bert? What's happening to Elmo? It's cold LSD. It's like pretending, but with panic attacks. Elmo ends up in Grouchland, which is of course messy, disgusting, and unpleasant. And that's just the music. Okay, that one's literally Oscar just with a nose. Super Grover was disguised better! A giant helicopter lands, stealing a bunch of people's belongings. But Elmo tells him to stop. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis in his finest role. It's not nice to take this. It all belongs to me. If I touch it, I own it. This is Huxley, played by Mandy, hello, my name is Princess Bride Joe Patinkin, who says he owns whatever he wants, including Elmo's blanket. Very lovely. You really know how to ruin a villainous moment, don't you? Now get in the cartoonishly evil vehicle and drive. All right, I took care of that joke. I have to get home to take a nap with my brand new whoopee. Oh, excuse me, just passed a kidney stone. Say bye-bye, Whoopi! It's a blanket! Whoopi! Blanket! Whoopi! Blanket! Whoopi! Blanket! Whoopi! Remember that deleted scene from Alien? Where Dallas pleaded with Ripley to kill him because what he was going through was so awful. <laughs> this! The this! It does lead to one of my favorite lines in the film, though. Can you please help Elmo get his hmm? blanket back? Well, I'd love to, but I don't speak English. This place is growing on me. A little girl named Grizzy says she'll show him Huxley's location, but doesn't think it'll do him any good. You go there, you might never make it back home again! Promise? Elmo goes off on his own, but he comes across the local plant life. They get a song too! Elmo, get your chin up! Things could be worse! It's another pretty forgettable tune with a weak melody, but on the plus side, it does give us some of the best green screen dancing since Labyrinth. This one I call the heart attack. You can feel the rhythm down. This one I call there's a vibrator in Elmo. Is this one I call showing mercy because I'm walking away. But Huxley sees Elmo is on his way. Shouldn't we do something? Ordinarily I would. But I am feeling a bit saucy today, huh? Did he just refer to himself as saucy? But I am feeling a bit saucy today, huh? Well, now I have no choice but to play this. I don't think I miss what you think I miss. He does this. Maybe if I look at it this way. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. And he orders his henchmen to watch Elmo. Meanwhile, Elmo's friends follow him to Grouch Land and try to find him. There's a police officer. Yeah, let's ask him for help. Oh. Topical. 
Huxley's henchman trick Elmo to go the wrong way, trapping him in a cave. He finds a minecart and, of course, goes riding in it. <laughs> Sorry, I was just giving you the ending you'll want to see. As a cat owner, I want to make sure they have the best food around. That's why I use ExpressVPN. With ExpressVPN, you can enjoy unrestricted access worldwide. It defeats content restrictions and censorship to deliver unlimited access to video, music, social media, and more from anywhere in the world. And it comes in three flavors, chicken, salmon, and barbecue ribs. ExpressVPN hides your IP address and encrypts your network data so no one can see what you're doing. One click and you're protected ensuring a nice smooth coat. You can get ExpressVPN on all your devices. A single ExpressVPN subscription comes with easy to use apps for every device you own. Mac, Windows, Android, iOS, Linux, routers, and so much more. ExpressVPN is the taste cats love to enjoy. It defeats hackers and spies with the best in-class encryption and leak proving, allows you to access any content no matter what your location, and you can connect to any of their unlimited bandwidth ultra-fast VPN servers with just a hint of tuna. I like using ExpressVPN because I know whenever I go shopping online, I'm always protected to get things like cat food. In fact, wait, maybe I should be feeding my cats that. Nah, there's ExpressVPN. And right now my viewers can get three months free by clicking on the link below. ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic. That's ExpressVPN.com slash Nostalgia Critic to get three months free. I'm legally required to say ExpressVPN is not cat food, because we live in a world where that has to be said. Sad. But everything else I said about ExpressVPN is true. Or, as my cats would say, ruff, ruff. <laughs> I'm insane. But ExpressVPN still works. Get three months free by clicking on the link below today. Like our videos? Subscribe to be notified about them! Want to actually be notified about them? Click on that bell as well. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch. Playing some games, telling some jokes, and overall having a good time. Hope to see you there. Elmo makes his way out of the cave, angering Huxley so much, he sings a cheerful song about it. Some may call it greed. It's not. It's need. A need I love to feed. The need to have a lot. Okay, full disclosure. I kind of like this song. Maybe because it's the villain song and those are always my favorite, but even excluding that, it has good rhythm, good lyrics, and I swear the ghost of every Steve Martin performance he wouldn't do because he said it was too over the top. My favorite teddy bear! Ah, my yo-yo! I love my yo-yo! I am your dance, Magic Dance! When umbrellas disappear, they're not lost, they're all here. With the key, you kind of find, because the written's left behind. Got him locked up in the box with the moon missing something. I'm a guy, glad I'm here and it's all we love! Move over, Hamilton! because you're not centered. There you go. You're still the best, but this song's pretty good. After kissing himself, I'm actually surprised he's the first person I've seen do that, he admits he wanted his singing voice to take him places. I almost performed in the bus and truck tour of West Side Story. They said I wasn't right for Maria. What do they know? I feel pretty. Problematic? No, no, it's never a question mark at the end of that. Everything's always problematic! Huxley instructs his henchmen to take Elmo to the Queen of Trash. No, the other one. And they once again lead him in a different direction. Thank you. Oh, he hugged me. Ah! I used all those jokes on Bert and Ernie. I think the symbolism speaks for itself. You know, the best part of this movie is unsurprisingly Grouchland. So, isn't it a little weird that there's barely any Grouchland in it? Especially when it's in the title? It's mostly just open fields and generic locations. The most unique place in the entire movie isn't on screen very long. It's like calling a film Brazil when it has nothing to do with Brazil. But you know some pretentious prick somewhere would love the hell out of that. You're going to see our queen. Queen? Yeah. Elmo makes it to the queen of trash, played by... Oh god, another dancing Uhura! Phew! Okay, Vanessa Williams. And again, I'll give props, it's not Grouchland, but this garbage kingdom is pretty creative. I like these weird creatures and landscapes made out of junk, and the Queen of Trash makes me feel things I shouldn't in a Sesame Street movie. Hey, 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 that's very inappropriate! Settle down! Williams sings a very nice song, but it comes out of nowhere, connects to Little, and... I'm sorry, this was Huxley's evil plan of torturing someone? It seems... nice! 
It's like punishing Captain Kirk by sending him to a harem of green women. I don't think you know how this works. I'm not just supposed to get his blanket back from Huxley, because it's mine! Well, you certainly sound like Huxley. The Queen makes Elmo think about how similar he is to Huxley and how possessive he is of his blanket. She says, though, if he's willing to give something, he would pass the ultimate challenge. You see, Huxley could never give anyone anything. Now, if you're able to give, then you pass the ultimate challenge, and you're free to go. I have a finger I can give! Wait, one, two, three, four, no, that doesn't work. What does Elmo have to give? 100 raspberries. Like this. Watch. Oh. Well, I didn't know Vanessa Williams sticking her tongue out at me in the Sesame Street movie would be a new fetish, but my boner never lies. Though he is very confused. 100 raspberries in 30 seconds. Elmo doesn't even have a tongue! Can we do a blinking contest? Ready, set, go! Can you please help Elmo do raspberries like this? He asked the kids in the audience to help. I'm starting to see why a lot of parents hated this movie. Arousing the Queen of Trash! Oh, that scent shivers down my spine! Oh, I love raspberries! I know, Boner, I'm not sure what to think of it either. <laughs> and he wins the challenge. Huxley sees Elmo escape and he unleashes his biggest weapon, a giant chicken. Hey, you, 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 dinner, stop running away from me. All right, this scene could be saved if a certain dick-nosed puppet enters the picture. Alf, yeah, forgot there were two, didn't ya? No, the chicken just throws him far away, but back at the prison, Oscar inspires the other grouches to rise up against Huxley. Meanwhile, Elmo comes across a caterpillar and he tells him about how he doesn't want to be like Huxley and doesn't need to have the blanket be his anymore. Elmo didn't get his blanket back! Don't worry, blanket! Elmo's coming! Or the exact opposite of what the moral is! You have one job, Sesame Street, teach anything, and he can't even do that! The caterpillar gives him the motivation to keep going and he bursts in demanding his blanket back. <laughs> Elmo's friends, though, make it just in time and stop Huxley. It's over, Huxley! <laughs> Get him! Okay, is it me or did it sound like he said kill him? Get him! Put their stuffing where his blood is and put his blood where their stuffing is! <laughs> the bug, though, gives Elmo his blanket back, regretting ever working with Huxley. I thought we were friends. No, you're a greedy, selfish villain, and nobody likes to be friends with a greedy, selfish villain. I thought you were preparing the kids for real life lessons. They all return to Sesame Street, and Elmo apologizes for hurting Zoe's feelings. Wow, I can hold it? Sure, what could happen? Again, giving you the ending you all want to see. Bert and Ernie bookend the movie by closing the film out. Yeah, it's a happy ending. Yep. And thank you all for helping. You did a lot more in this movie than we did. And our faces are worth more than your lives. Bert? Well, it's true. And that was The Adventures of Elmo in Grouchland. I mean, it's not good, but like the Barney movie, how can I be that mad at it? Elmo, I guess, has that excitable innocence that a lot of children have, so it's not surprising so many kids enjoy him, but... Unlike the other Sesame Street characters, that charm doesn't stretch into adulthood. At least for me, anyway. I know these characters aren't the Muppets who always aim for kids and adults, but there is still a weight to their personalities that keep us anchored to them. Elmo is just a nice character, no more, no less. And being nice isn't awful, it's just not always that interesting. I definitely prefer something like Follow That Bird, which I found was more difficult to make jokes for because the character still felt so real so many years later. Maybe it's because I didn't grow up with him, but Elmo never felt real to me. But it is a big bar set against him with these characters, and hey, I guess he felt real to a lot of other kids, tramplingly so. Aside from the message, which I think really gets sidetracked in parts, the film is totally fine for kids. I just don't think it's gonna have the lasting power of other Muppet or Sesame Street properties. But I don't know, what are your thoughts? Did you grow up with Elmo? Did you like him, hate him? Did your feelings on him change over time? I'm actually really curious. Whatever your thoughts, this movie's definitely not gonna be breaking any records anytime soon. Besides, they're on HBO now. I'm sure they can do a lot with that. I shall have such revenges on you. Both. I'm so looking forward to that crossover. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Wubby! Blanket! Wubby! Blanket! Wubby! Blanket!
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Once again, we're doing one that ties into uh, battling the coronavirus and we're doing one that we've done before. It's called Global Giving. Uh, this is a wonderful charity that has uh, four stars on Charity Navigator. And uh, what they do normally uh, is they connect nonprofits, donors, and companies in nearly every country. But what they're doing specifically for the coronavirus uh, is if you donate to them, uh, your donation to this fund will help stop the virus's spread and give communities on the front line the resources they need to act quickly and protect the most vulnerable. As the situation evolves, the fund will transition to support longer-term recovery and education efforts run by local vetted organizations in affected regions. Uh, they will also work with their partners on the ground to allocate funds where they're the most needed. So, like I said before, this is a charity we've talked about before. It's a really, really great organization, and they are also doing their best to combat uh, COVID-19. So, Definitely take a look, see if it's something uh, you're interested in uh, donating to, and if not, go ahead, spread the word. Uh, like I said, there's so many, as I say all the time, there's still so many good people trying to do so many good things, and they deserve so much attention and support. So please, uh, if you can give something great, if not, just spread the word about them. Thank you so much, and take care.